What's up guys? It's John with Mods and More. Today we are back on the $500 Amazon build and I'm feeling like doing some sheet metal today. So I was thinking, why don't we cut this floor panel and then get that bolted into place. Um, I don't want to weld it in, I think I said in the last video, because um, a lot of times that's where you end up getting rust. Um, so I, what I was thinking was cutting the piece so it fits within the outside rails just a hair and then welding on tabs where we can then just bolt the floor down and then that way if we need to rip this thing apart or get underneath any of this the floor can actually come back out. Um, so I'll show you the panel that we have. We'll mark it and uh, cut it out. It's already close to the dimensions that we need. We just need a notch for the steering um, and take a little length off of it. And then I think we'll use, we have this flat stock here, eighth inch I believe. We'll cut a bunch of tabs out of that, get the floor seated, maybe clamp it, I'm not sure yet, and then we'll drill all those locations through the floor into this and then go back through with some stainless steel hardware and bolt it into place. I don't think we gotta get nuts, maybe 10 different spots or so. Um, and that should bolt it in there really good. So I'll show you the piece and then we'll get to cutting. For our piece, we got this guy. So this was a roof panel from a different buggy that I did. Um, this is stainless steel, so we don't gotta worry about it rusting or anything like that. And uh, we're not gonna need it for that other buggy project because we're gonna be changing all that stuff on that one. So I figure it does have a couple holes in it here and there um, from where it was bolted in previously, but that's not a big deal. And these side ones, we could possibly utilize those um, on the floor setup. So let's take some measurements and uh, get this thing marked out. We'll cut it up and get a floor in this sucker. frame square this up in here and then go along the frame and mark all these pre-drilled locations because we're just going to use we might as well use those since they're already there and then with those marked we can pull this out and get some tabs welded in
with here to get it keep it from moving. up of what we got and all of our stainless screws or bolts I'm not a huge fan of the gap I really wish I had a bigger piece that didn't have the gap I'll be honest but I think once like the side skins are on which I'm not even 100% sure if I'm gonna do the side skins yet I definitely wanted to do something in this area um, I don't know. I'm sure once it's painted too, like you won't even really notice that as much, but right now that just grabs my eye and bothers my eyeball. This hibachery bothers me too. Now that this thing's starting to come together, it's like there's little things that I did that I'm like, I don't like it. So I forgot and that I have a whole little separate stockpile under here of like specialty metals, like all 4140 and stuff. And then this was under there, which I'm not even sure what this is. I think it's just zinc plated steel, smooth rod. But it's the right diameter for that. So I was thinking cut that chunk out and then just weld in a new chunk that's the proper length. I think it'll look a lot better. So that's where we're at with the floor in. Maybe we just kind of stick with the metal, keep rocking on that. And uh, I don't know, I want to get that little hood piece. That looked really cool. So maybe we'll play with that next. Oh, and then the roll bar. We got to figure that out. Yeah, that could be a good thing to get done. So basically what I'm thinking is a roll bar that comes up from here, goes around the seat, and then like some angles that come down in the back. I think that coupled with the with the tube in the front now, like it'll give it like a cool like cockpit look. It'll definitely look a lot cooler than it did in my opinion. All right, let me go uh, search for some materials and see if we have something to make that bar out of. Yeah, we got snow guys, it's out of foot and it's still coming down. Yay. All right guys, so let me show you what we got. Last night, I bent up this bar, just playing around, it took forever. That's actually two pieces welded and, and plugged and it was a pain in the butt. Uh, so I didn't even bother filming it, but I bent that bar and I cleaned up a couple of other bars from the old roll cage not much left of it now and uh what i'm thinking is we mount that bar behind the seat here the only problem i see is obviously for me the seat needs to be all the way back um so the bar kind of needs to be all the way back to that furthest point as well um because there's going to be a crossbar too. So there's like somewhere to mount belts and whatnot. And if that crossbar was too far in on the seat, it's gonna whack me upside the back or head, neck, all horrible things. So I think we gotta get the bar as far back as possible, but I don't want it to mount 
as far back as possible. So what I'm thinking is we mount somewhere up here and then have it come back at a slight angle. And then we have our horizontals come down, tagging it down into the frame here, making it extremely strong. And then that crossbar going across and that way there's places for belts and whatnot. Now, when the seat is all the way forward, it's going to get a little weird because you know the point where the belts attach is going to be way back there but they're adjustable so that's fine um i don't know it's gonna be kind of kind of weird but so let's get it up there see what it looks like and then we will notch these guys and angle them to be those horizontal uh pieces and then this one we can make our cross beam out of All right, let's tack weld it in on this side, or no, on the back side, and that will kind of hinge it for us and allow us to get that angle. finish welding around so we don't got to worry about anything moving and uh, then we'll start doing the diagonal pieces. So now we got to do the same thing on this guy. So while the two benders, two notcher is still set on the same cut, we'll go over, put the same one on this, and then see what it fits like. This is the Harbor Freight Notcher. I think it's like 50 something bucks. Does pretty good. Not bad for doing, you know, smaller stuff like this. And this is the Hercules hole saws that are probably like three years old at this point and used and abused. And they just cut through that that easily. It's not bad. our diagonal on that side looks 
Good. Kind of gives it a cool look. Uh, like a cockpit kind of look. It's definitely a little high, but when I'm in there, believe it or not, I climb up on that 250 pound rated cart and I'm sitting there. My head's not far from that. But safety first. And now we have a spot where we can mount our fuel tank. We can do our crossbar here. Let's grab that, see what that looks like. So I'm not sure where exactly that will go, but somewhere in here. And then we can mount our seat belts, fuel tank, all that stuff to it. Something like that. All right guys, I got the notches put on the tube, placed it in between the frame. It looks like it's gonna work pretty good. Uh, so I notched it like that. I used the digital angle gauge off the front. And that's where I've been um, calibrating from on everything is off the front rail here. That seemed to work pretty good. So let's get that welded in and uh, our roll bar will pretty much be done um our fuel tank will mount back here so for that we'll have to get you know have a couple tabs coming off for the fuel tank and uh it's like the i ordered like the saddlebag style tank and uh should fit pretty good back there Let's fix this steering shaft. We're starting to get down to the punch list items. This is a major thing that I want to replace. I'm also going to lengthen a little bit to get the steering wheel a little bit closer to the seat. Kind of, you know, sits a little far into the dash here. So get that out a little bit, lengthen this maybe an inch and a half or so. And that way the sleeve won't be there. We're just going to weld in a whole new piece. Um, originally we didn't because I didn't want to heat up these U-joints by welding too close to them, but you know what? That's driving me nuts, so I wanna get rid of that. And then another thing we need to get done is the bracing that comes down to our rear end mounts. Um, so I'm gonna tell you guys, on the tripod and rock and roll on this, get this thing knocked out as quick as possible. I really didn't want to, but these were basically they turned down the shaft to like half inch from five eighths, so it inserts into there first. Um, these were those plugs. Once I grinded down the welds, I could see the seam of where these were, so I punched them out, drilled them out, got them out. So now we're down to that half inch size. Um, and then this is our new shaft. So I didn't want to have to do it, but we're going to have to throw this in the lathe, turn it down so we can recess into those holes.
get them welded in. All right, guys, there she is. I had to run out and dunk it in the snow, try to cool her down so we didn't mess up these joints. I think they're all right. We've got, we're starting to get a little smoke, but I think it was from the, mainly from the paint. But, all right, let's pop her in. There she is. I'm gonna play around with it a little bit. I think I need to reverse it because this bolt is now nicking this edge and it wasn't doing that before. Um, so I'm assuming I probably just have them reversed and for whatever reason that matters, I'm not sure why. Or it could just be where I am on the splines and where that ends up on the rotation. Um, the other thing that has to be addressed is the tilt in the steering wheel, which is, seems way worse now because the the bearing's not actually tightened up but um even when it is tightened there's like a little bit of wobble there that i really don't like so I'll try to find a way to fix that too all right guys i found a couple more pieces of sheet metal and i kind of just placed them on the front end i think it looks kind of cool let's take a look so I found this piece here. Well, remember, there is a bend on that front tube, so we'd have to kind of do like a custom bend here. And something like that, obviously we trim these and join them so it's like one solid piece that comes down at a nice angle there. And gives it like a nice arrow point type front end. Um, I think it's worth trying. I don't know 100%, but I think it's definitely worth trying. Yeah. Um, and then, while the camera was charging up, I was messing around with the steering. And I found another one of those bearings and i was like you know what it's like total crazy overkill i'm like let me t pull the steering shaft out again and add another bearing to the front so i just took an identical plate rounded the corners obviously since it's facing the driver and welded that across the front and then added a second bearing there so it's again it's total freaking overkill but the steering now is so smooth with zero wiggle took all the wiggle out of the out of the steering shaft everything so now i'm thinking you know that kind of looks a little crazy looks like a crazy door hinge but uh these plates we can cut those trim pieces that will completely cover all of that and make the whole front end look really sweet so I think I want to give it a shot. So let's cut them up, cut them to the shape and see what it looks like. I don't know it's growing on me but at first I was like Ooh, I don't know about this here we go so it looks a little weird right now because the we got the weld going across would have been nice if I had one solid piece but I think what we'll do is we'll take the same flat stock that I have in stock this stuff and we'll do two tabs off of here and here 
and then probably two tabs off of the center here and here and then, whoa, whoa. and then two tabs down here here and here and then we'll have three like nice allen head bolts boom 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 Let's get them welded in. Okay, brackets are all in. I s traced the holes onto this piece. They ended up being pretty good. I kind of wanted them to like stay in within a certain amount. These ones are slightly off from that line. Do, do, but it's not too bad. I think it'll be all right. Um, I didn't want to be like drilling like into here, but I flushed those up. Took a lot of the weld off, but it'll be all right. Cause like I said, we'll we'll hit it from underneath too before we when we're cleaning it up for paint. Um, so now we can drill these holes out, and let me show you. I think we're gonna use. I have a bunch of these stainless steel Allen head ones. And I think we'll probably use these, and then I have some little stainless steel nylock nuts that go with them. Um, they're obviously on the long side, but we can cut them down. Those or these um, plastic panel Chinese quad type fasteners that come with the Chinese quad. Um, I think I have a bunch of new ones somewhere too, but something like that. I just don't want them to rust, so I'm probably going to go with the stainless steel. Oh, and check this out, guys. Wow, some sneaks. These are gonna look a little bit better, don't you think? Boom, front and rear, that way they all match. Obviously, that's not part of the original budget. That was a little extra I threw on there. I have a problem with wanting things to look like a certain way, so it was really bugging me that these tires aren't the same but all right let's get these holes drilled and we will plop this piece on Alright, we good. Alright, deeper the holes. Good deal. Everything still lines up. They're definitely long, so I'll have to trim them for sure. Alright guys, the list is getting shorter. I say we address this once and for all. Let's do the, di the triangulated support brackets here. Um, 
get that welded in, then that's done. And then literally the only other things that we have to do are the fuel tank, which comes in later on today. I ordered a catch can just because I figured it'd be something else we could mount to this. It looked kind of cool. Um, yeah, we're like super close. So let's get that done. That's like the last major component. And then I also want to do some diagonal bracing here in the front. Um, and then we're good. So let's get that done. Let's go over to the bandsaw. We'll cut that thing into some, some usable pieces. And then uh, I'll clean them up. We'll get them notched and welded in. So the tubes are all cleaned up. I pre-cut these angles over on the bandsaw on them, which, oh, so much nicer. So now we're just gonna hold these up, scribe that top notch as best we can, and then uh, see what we can do. All right, guys, they fit beautiful. This is basically what I'm thinking, something like this. So just come in and triangulate that. It's gonna make it 10 times stronger and look better. So let's get her welded in. There we go. It's very interesting. It kind of matches this like shape there. Um, but basically that's it. So the tubes come down and they're actually, they're out further than the frame. So they flare out and uh, triangulate that. So now we never got to worry about getting any flex there. Next up, fuel tank, catch can. We gotta do something about this floor because them gaps, them gaps be crazy. Can't stand it. What's up guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Mods and More. Today we continue work on the Amazon goat cart build. Uh, we got some parts in last night. Let me show you what we got. I just cut some brackets too so we can kind of jump right into it today and not have to mess around with cutting a bunch of brackets and whatnot. So I'm going to show you what we got. Alright, so this is the little saddlebag style fuel tank that came in. Not the biggest thing, but very similar to, to the stock one. And what I'm thinking we do is mount it kind of off to the side, something like that. So, and another thing we need to do is mount the harness, get some tabs in there. So I went ahead, I cut some tabs for the harness, and then I made some tabs for the fuel tank. So these are pretty hefty, and they'll just bolt up like this on both sides, and then catch that crossbar. And I'll just weld it in. So, we'll bolt it up with that hardware and then just hold it up there, tack it in place, and we'll be good to go. Uh, the more I look at the belts, 
I think it's going to be easier to put the to weld the tabs in once I have this thing stripped apart. So you can see I put some red lines where the tabs need to go, um, and we'll just weld those in once everything's all taken out of it, and I can just get in there and, and weld it in, you know, nicely the first time instead of trying to squeeze in there. This side is much tighter with the battery box and all that in the way. Decent quality. It's got a good cap on it. Well, have this guy pointing over this way. Then we'll run a line right down. Probably would have been better to have it on this side because the carbs on this side. But I don't know. This felt right. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. That's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully, you got something out of it. Uh, next video, we got a bunch more stuff to get into, so uh, hope to see you over there. If you like the video, drop a like. Think about subscribing. We got a bunch more of these projects on the way, and I will check you on the next one.